Hello and welcome to today's LOLE Sports Roundup where we will cover all the news of the last 24 hours. There is more than one board worth of news today that's occurred in the last day. So this board and then we'll have a break, you know, scene switch to the other board. Um, now, LNG starts us off. A lot of these moves are players officially leaving their team. Ale leaves LNG. He had a 188 KDA, 827 CS per minute, 54 2 KP, 22 9 gold uh, kill share, 22 2 gold share, 8 champions in 20 games. It, this occurred at um, LPL playoffs. So these are playoff numbers, which are still very solid, above 8 CS per minute in top lane. He's doing well in his matchups, 54 2 KP, pretty solid. And when we go through the rest of LNG and their playoff stats, it. Um, you know, it makes a lot of sense so we can work through how LNG played the playoffs from a KP perspective and maybe a stylistic perspective on how they, they chose to fight and who they chose to fight around. But um, 21 years old, Ale went back and forth with Pandasi a bit last split, um, but Ale is now a free agent. Um, the only player actually from the starting five is Tarzan that is left with LNG when this is said and done as of the moment. Duimbi has left. He is reportedly taking a break. Um, I feel like this may be the end of Duimbi. Um, not for a negative reason, but I feel like with a baby on the way, there is a possibility that fatherhood takes over if and when a healthy, I mean, you know, we're all going to hope that he has a healthy, you know, baby and all that. And when that happens, he, uh, fatherhood could take over. And at that point, he may just prefer fatherhood over playing a video game which is completely understandable um 363 kda 857 cs per minute 62 7 kp 20.9 kill share 22 gold share nine champions at 20 games he is 25 years old will be 26 years old at the end of the month so like i said he is not you know a spring chicken anymore but he did play well in the playoffs over eight and a half doing never has been a really well his rise his rise hack right is is a meme but Otherwise, I don't see him as like a lane dominant player, more so a roamer making things happen and also having weird picks and counter picks that help the team and help him in lane. Um, and it is actually kind of funny. You see he has a less gold. He has less gold than Ale on average, um, slightly a lot. And that's due to kills. Despite getting into more fights, he didn't quite finish the deal as much as Ale did. Um, light from the bot lane, 488 KDA, 989 CS per minute, 667 KP, 357 kill share, 256 gold share, six champions of 20 games. He's 21 years old. Light has a bright future ahead of him. One could say that he, um, you know, was the best, you know, statistically one of the better performers on the team in the playoffs. Um, 989 is definitely at and around an upper tier part of the bot lane. Um, you don't expect LNG's bot lane to be that competitive all the time, given that there's Tarzan and Doombi and Jungle and Mid, but Light does a lot of work. His support, Lamau, is also a free agent. 459 KDA, 71 9 KP, five champions at 20 games, is 26 years old. So he is at a point in his career where he, it might be it. We'll see if somebody picks him up, but. Um, you know, he is not washed by any means. He just might not quite be, you know, at um, his prime anymore. Um, am I on the screen here? Hopefully I am. Be kind of late to move around. Um, LGD, Shadow has been allowed to walk. Actually, both jungler, junglers, Shadow and Kai. Um, Shadow, 3.5 KDA, 50... Uh, 5.51 CS per minute, 67 3 KP, 21 kill share, 18 4 gold share, six, uh, nine champions of 24 games, 21 years old. This is a Mad Lions um, jungler that was picked off a couple years ago at only 18, 19 years old to play in the LPL. One of the very few Western players that has been able to make a transition to the East successfully. Um, well, successfully, I guess, is a loaded term, but... Um, made the switch and not get tossed right away let's put it that way uh his backup key was allowed to leave 197 kda 492 cs per minute 63 4 kp 15 8 kill share 17 9 gold share seven champions in 18 games he's also 21 years old not quite as good as shadow i didn't think he looked great when he played obviously these numbers would um 
support that a below 2 kda below 5 cs per minute less kp so versus compared to shadow on the same team i know they were using multiple mid laners multiple bot laners um, and top laners for that matter um, but he didn't farm as much didn't get as many fights i mean it's it's hard to really um justify him being over shadow in the lineup um both bot laners allowed to lead leave assum um ass i'm sorry assume well, it's kind of funny um assume these stats from assume are at 18 years old because he turned 19 this past year um 239 kda 91 cs per minute that includes three Senna games 69 5 kp 31 4 kill share 25 1 gold share 10 champions at 39 games um actually i think maybe spring with he was 18 years old i think he's t very very talented i think he has potential in the bot lane definitely brought a new level of play for lgd however both he and Eric did not win lane often. And if you think about it, they only used one support being Jin Zhao. And Jin Zhao, I don't even think is... I think he was like roll swap this past year, right? So it's kind of weird that they were so stuck on Jin Zhao. But as far as uh, AD Carry was concerned, that was what they were swapping. Eric, 284 KDA, 923 CS per minute, 62.3 KP. 28.5 kill share, 24.6 gold share. Nine champions in 42 games, 21 years old. These stats are from spring. Um, so in spring, they used Eric. In summer, they used Asum. For uh, most of it, I think Eric played like three games out of 42. Um, so, you know, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. I, LGD allowed everybody to walk pretty much. I think Chelsea is staying. Hai Chao and Jin Zhao. So, LGD is a mess. Um, FlyQuest Impact officially joins 817 KDA, 818 CS per minute, 56.6 KP, 24.3 kill share, 23 gold share, 6 champions in 10 games at Worlds Play-Ins. He was 27 years old. He'll be 28 early on in the split. Um, Impact, not, you know, a carry anymore, but these numbers in play-ins, he played outstanding in his group. You can't take that away from him that he, that he outplayed the play-in teams, which isn't saying a lot but we did talk about evie yesterday right joining heretics played the same teams in group stage and then obviously played rng for a few games but impact had to play mad lions you know that's not a um it's not like they're playing not like he was playing a minor region team in his best of five and they 3 0'd. and i mean mad lions aren't rng at the same time um but nevertheless uh I think it shows the gap, right? Impact is definitely a lot better than Eevee. And um, Impact is still one of the better top laners in the LCS. Weibo, their bot lane walks. So Wan Fang, 571 KDA, 96 CS per minute, 66 8 KP, 28 9 kill share, 24 4 gold share, 11 champions of 41 games. Caveat, three of these champions are under 9.5 CS. So actually, eight of 11. We're above nine and a half. He ends up with a nine six average. Zeri and Siver were both well over eleven. Wan Feng is great in lane. He's one of my favorite bot laners. I had him in my top five in my bot lane rankings. Um, I think he is supremely talented. Um, rumors have him going to BLG, um, but we'll see. Um, Twenty one years old. I think he's fabulous. His support on two eight five KDA sixty eight nine KP sixteen champions of forty games. That is an ocean. 16 champions in 40 games. You do not see a lot of plus 15. Um, and only 19 years old. And some of last year was at 18. I think I'm going to make a video before the year about players that are turning 18 to 19, 19 to 20, 20 to 21. And um, go over how I believe that they should be given a longer leash. That people um, should not be, you know, as condemning of these players. And think that they're inters. In the, I mean, I'm, not, I'm one of those people, right? That I thought on definitely into this face off at times i've held him you know in, in um low regard for that that he hurt Wan feng in lane often and he hurt the team but he's also a young player with room to grow and i think people forget that and they just kind of want to move on to the next thing and that's why teams end up you know in a perpetual cyclical cycle of ineptness the definition of being inept is doing the same thing and expecting different results uh, if i recall correctly like 
if you're going to keep doing the same thing wrong over and over again, you're showing that you just, you can't figure this out. Like you, like it's just, you got to kind of leave it, leave it be. Ultra Prime, um, starting to make some moves. They're rumored to be after Teddy at 80 carry. Uh, Ning has joined. Ning is coming back from retirement, similar to Double Lift, but a lot younger. Um, 428 KDA, 545 CS per minute, 70 KP, 197 kill share, 186 gold share, 9 champions at 41 games. These stats mean pretty much nothing. Um, they occurred in 2020 summer with IG. Obviously, Ning has uh, been around the block and had very high highs, and some people, you know, think that he stinks. But he has had those highs, hasn't he? Can't take those away from him. We'll see um, how he does with Ultra Prime. Uh, it's better off that the coach left. Uh, the head coach, I don't know how he had a job. Um, I don't know who he was paying to have the job because I don't know how you pay a guy that is 9 and 23 with your team. Okay, whatever. But he overall is 58 and 108 as a head coach. Like, in, in looking at his career, like, the teams that he is given responsibility for on Leakpedia as a coach, 58 and 108 goes along with 9 and 23. I mean, before going into this, he was 51 and what? 85? Yeah, 51 and 85. That stinks. That stinks. So the fact that he had a job was beyond me, and the fact that um, he's leaving is good for Ultra Prime. That explains a lot of their problems, by the way. Warhorse joins as Team World Elite's coach. They need all the help they can get. And Warhorse, former world champion coach with FPX, is 70 and 24 in his career in the LPL as a coach. You look at 58 and 108, 70 and 24. I mean, that win rate is, is disgusting. Not to mention, he also was a coach of Flash Wolves when they had their success. So Warhorse has been around the block. He's been at the top of the mountain. He knows what it takes. This is a big hire for Team World Elite. Now, can they build a team that he can work with? Remains to be seen. But that's it for this board. Now on to the next one. Some LEC news. Um, Excel announced their roster. We had known about this for a while, but they announced it. So they kept um, Patrick and Coach Young Buck. Added Odo Omne in top lane. Odo had a 216 KDA. 719 CS per minute. 60.9 KP. 15.5 kill share. 19.9 gold share. Five champions in 10 games at Worlds. We saw them get out of groups. The only Western team to do so on Rogue. Um, he played his role very well as a weak side top laner playing Maokai to, you know, a uh, high level. But he was losing his lane and just playing champions that had relevance in the mid to late game. That's kind of what Odo is now at 27 years old. So um, he kind of just does that job. It was like a perfect storm for him and what the meta became in top lane in the early parts of... Um, the main event, you know, like it hadn't quite got to the crazy um, high, you know, octane picks until the end. Xerxe joins in the jungle from Astralis, 442 KDA, 543 CS per minute, 75 KP, 222 kill share, 187 gold share, six champions in 18 games, is 23 years old. He was one of my top ranked um, junglers in the LEC Lash split. I might have had him in my top three. Or he was fourth. Regardless, it was shockingly high for Astralis. But when you really think about it, Xerxe and Jonghoon were the only two people really doing anything for Astralis. Xerxe played fabulous on this team. We'll see what happens. This is, um, I believe, a super team. Now, will it find um, success? Last year, super teams really didn't. Vathio joins in mid, uh, 433 KDA, 951 CS per minute, 684 KP, 29.3 kill share, 24.2 gold share, 8 champions in 19 games, 19 years old. I do believe he was the top mid lane prospect in the West and one of the top players in the West outright hitting free agency. Vathio was my uh, MVP for spring. I thought he was, you know, had moments in summer where he's good and sometimes he wasn't. Um, but in spring, he played very well. They just couldn't figure out how to play around him on misfits in summer. And, um, you know, those numbers are fabulous though, right? He was getting ahead. He was carrying. I mean, essentially he was carrying a 29, five kill share is very high for a mid laner. You don't see that often. Um, you know, they, he, uh, he did what he could. He did what he could. 
Um, I think he's definitely on a better team now than he was on was with Misfits. Um, Targamus will be the support from G2. G2 let him go. I didn't include that because I didn't want to include Targamus twice. Um, Targamus, 606 KDA, 79 2 KP, 8 champions in 10 games in um, LEC playoffs, 22 years old. I thought Targamus carried Flackett. Um, Patrick is in a good spot alongside him. Targamus has a lot of value. He's a really good player. Um, I think that he's very underrated. Um, I think he's like probably third, fourth best support in the LEC. Um, and being on Excel, we'll see if if he can continue his success that he had with G2 or not. I do think Patrick is a lot better than Flackhead. Lastly, FPX made a move that's kind of puzzling. Juicy becomes the head coach. Juicy was their academy coach. He went 10-6 and six in spring. Uh, finished second in a couple competitions with the academy team. I don't know what FPX plans on doing with the roster per se. But I do think this coaching hire is a little puzzling. Um, the guy has little to no experience at the top level. Eventually, he does have to get some. So, better now than ever. Not better now than never. But at the same time, um, FPX definitely looking like a team that may rebuild this off um, this off season. So, that's it for my roundup. If you missed my video yesterday, I went over the Aphelios Jinx matchup, um, the top 21 outliers out of 385 games. So I put a lot of effort into that one. So if you missed it, uh, give it a view. Thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, like the video if you like it, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a YouTube member. And like I said, thank you for watching.